it's hard to believe this is happening in front of our eyes on public television. Serial entrepreneur and world-changing innovator Elon Musk is being targeted yet again. Elon is sometimes a divisive individual. However, Musk is actively attempting to alter the course of history. So aside from being the CEO of Tesla, SpaceX, and Twitter, the serial entrepreneur views himself as a global leader. Musk has made it his goal to revolutionize society. If attacking the circles of power one after the other to prove his point and reach a wider audience is the way to go, he is up for it. Recently, Musk has been going against the United Nations leaders and showing their hypocrisy. What could the billionaire be up to this time? Join us and let's find out. Yes, this time, Elon is challenging the United Nations, a powerful multinational organization popularly known as the UN. It is the only location on Earth where representatives from all of the world's countries meet to debate common problems affecting the people and work together to develop answers that benefit humanity. Throughout its history, the United Nations has undergone several reforms to remain relevant in an ever-evolving globe. The UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres made a speech saying, Stop the hatred. Governments, regulators, decision makers, technological corporations, the media, and civil society. Put up solid barriers and take responsibility for hurtful comments. We are gathering all stakeholders around the code of conduct for information integrity on digital platforms as part of my report or our shared agenda. Additionally, we are sharpening our attention to the misinformation we are spreading that is impeding solutions to major world problems, such as the climate catastrophe. Guterres said in a Twitter post, We'll call for action from everywhere with influence on the spread of mis- and disinformation on the internet. This appeal to curb the dissemination of misleading information was not well received by Musk, presently in control of Twitter. He is not a Mark Zuckerberg. Elon can't just obey orders from the top. That post was a major catalyst that led the billionaire to blast the UN, saying that the UN is more likely to cause rather than prevent disinformation. For Musk, false information on social media is quite a sensitive topic. His actions show that Elon aspires to serve as the voice of individuals who believe they're never heard on a global scale. Thus, he has made it his goal to undermine the institutions of authority that conservatives and progressives despise. This is a little surprising, knowing that Elon had a unique relationship with the UN before this time, and this was not his first indirect issue with the UN supporters. During the pandemic, Republican former South Carolina governor and current head of the United Nations Food Program, David Beasley, tweeted a link to the report's 1,000-word executive summary. It details the UN's proposed use of $6.6 billion in food and vouchers to feed more than 40 million people in 43 countries on the edge of hunger, preventing what the WFP is calling a pending catastrophe. Beasley urged billionaires to step up now on a one-time basis to help end global hunger, singling out Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos as examples. According to Beasley, the WFP proposes allocating $3.5 billion for direct food purchases and distribution, $2 billion for cash and food vouchers, including transaction fees in places where markets can function, and another $700 million for managing new food programs that are adapted to the in-country conditions and guarantee the assistance reaches the most vulnerable. Supply chain management, operations management, administration, and accountability would get another $400 million. The planet is on fire, Beasley wrote. Pandemic, conflict, climatic shocks, and now growing supply chain costs add up to a perfect storm, about which I have been warning for some time. In a subsequent tweet, Beasley added, This hunger crisis is urgent, unprecedented, and preventable and tagged Musk, the world's richest person with a net worth of over $288 billion at that time. You requested an explanation of our strategy and access to our financial records. This is it. If you're serious about saving lives, we're eager to chat with you. According to Beasley, 2% of Musk's fortune would be enough to end global hunger if he donated $6 billion. This set off a heated exchange between the two men. When asked about it on Twitter, Musk said, If WFP can explain on this Twitter thread precisely how $6 billion would eliminate global hunger, I will sell Tesla shares right now and do it. What a comeback from Elon. Now that's how you silence hypocrites in their own game. 
Beasley then responded to Musk's tweets and tried to cover himself, assuring Elon that mechanisms for open source accounting and transparency were already in place. I don't mean to single out Elon Musk. However, the United Nations food officials beg for your assistance. Musk replied that it must be open source accounting so the public understands exactly how the money is spent. According to Beasley, for him to even participate in this dialogue is a game changer because simply stated, we can answer his questions, we can put out a clear strategy. Whatever question he has, we're happy to address them. There are real people at risk and I'm looking forward to talking to him about it. The global food problem was already aggravated by climate change and violence when the epidemic hit. As a result of the virus though, 42 million people are literally knocking on famine's door, as Beasley put it. Let's hope it doesn't come to this. It is still being determined if Musk or Bezos have seen the concept or whether they will decide to endorse it. Less than a month before bashing the UN for causing rather than preventing disinformation, Musk slammed the World Economic Forum, also known as WEF. Business executives, international leaders, and cultural trendsetters from all over the globe gather annually at this conference to discuss pressing global topics, including the impact of technology on national security. Musk said, WEF is turning into an unelected global government that the people never asked for and don't want. He criticized this very influential organization by writing that it is on its way to becoming an unelected global government that no one wants. This tweet is in reaction to a video showing World Economic Forum founder and chairman Klaus Schwab urging people to put their confidence in the metaverse's global collaboration village rather than decaying governmental structures. The video features Schwab as he discusses why the public may believe in the company because Interpol is an international organization dedicated to finding answers to and acting upon some of the world's most pressing problems. Musk didn't stop there. He also ran a poll on Twitter asking his millions of followers whether they thought WEF should rule the world. The sum of these actions demonstrated his long-standing dissatisfaction with the conference. By doing so, he reignited the discussion on this club's merits, bringing together journalists, civil society figures, business executives, and politicians in the Swiss ski town of Davos. It reminded everyone of when Musk attended the World Economic Forum last year and complained that it was dull. While he did not believe that those who invited him to Davos were plotting evil, he did say, it seemed boring AF, ha ha ha, while explaining his decision to decline. Yet, Jan Zapf, the organizer of the World Economic Forum Summit, said that Musk was never sent an invitation to attend, rendering Musk's allegation of denying the invitation false. According to Zapf, he did not get the invitation this year and not lately, last time in 2015. Also, Musk never registered for any yearly gathering in Davos, he said. In the end, the discussion over Musk's comments and viewpoints was on par with or even surpassed those of the forum's agenda issues. The entrepreneur who describes himself as an absolutist of free speech has reinstated the majority of the accounts that Twitter 1.0 had deactivated due to the breaches of internal policies against the dissemination of misinformation, xenophobia, racism, and anti-Semitism. Musk has also made free speech the guiding concept regarding content regulation, meaning that any tweet is permissible on the site as long as it doesn't break the law. Recently, Musk angrily responded to comments made by Richard Edelman, the CEO of the self-named communications firm that provides guidance to businesses all over the globe. Edelman was questioned about the social networks and misinformation propagation during a World Economic Forum discussion. Musk, sometimes willingly and sometimes unwillingly, gets himself involved in global issues and offers commentary on any topic that, in his opinion, impacts the Earth. I believe he has something up his sleeves when he takes the challenge by the UN and the World Economic Forum officials. And you will soon find out what's going to happen next from Elon's Twitter or from me here. Thanks for watching.